Dave Rubin sat down with Sam Harris for a wide-ranging interview. Uh, I want to respond to the part of the conversation on Israel. Let's take a look. I mean, that's, that's the other thing about Judaism now is that it's very hard to find Jews who believe anything superstitious in the service of their Judaism. I, I debate conservative rabbis who don't even believe in God, apparently. <laughs> they believe, or the God they believe in is just like, you know, quantum mechanics or just pure energy. Or I mean, it's, it's not a God who can hear prayers. Um, I believe in the force. Yes, the that's, qualify, that's uh, I've, met, I've met that rabbi. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, so it's a, uh, uh, but so my bias toward Israel. Whenever you're talking about uh, the conflict between Israel and her neighbors, my bias towards Israel is really a bias against suicide bombing and the use of human shields and an explicitly genocidal aspiration which Hamas has in its charter and many, uh, many uh, um, of Israel's antagonists ha have just in, in the way they talk about the, the fate of the Jews. I mean, it is prophesized that you know, the, the end times will come when the very earth cries out against the Jews, where, the, where the, the trees and the rocks say, there's a Jew behind me, come kill him. I mean, that is, that is like center of the fairway Islamic <laughs> prophecy, right? right? Um, and it's in the charter of Hamas, right? So how can, how is it, can Israel expect to deal with these people? Right. right? So I think uh, you, you illustrated in that piece that if the weapons were reversed, if the Israelis had the weapons that Hamas has and Hamas had the weapons the Israelis had, well, this thing would be over tomorrow because yeah. there would be a genocide tomorrow, which to me sort of sums up the why this yes, conversation that, that, is so silly. That is the, 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 the moral disparity that all of Israel's critics have to admit to be intellectually honest yeah. here. <laughs> that last part there really gets under my skin. You have to admit that or else you're not being intellectually honest. All right. So if, let's be really kind in what he's saying here in our interpretation. So if his argument is, hey, we snap our fingers, and today in 2015, you just flip the positions. So in other words, the histories are, you don't switch in 1947, I'll come back to that in a second, but you switch today, you snap your fingers and you switch today. Is it true in that case that uh, Hamas having Israel's power and then Israel having the Palestinians' power that there could be a genocide if you did that. Snap your fingers. Maybe if you set up your thought experiment like that. But the more compelling argument, in my opinion, and the one that really matters is, what if you switched their positions from 1947 and onward? If you want to do a thought experiment, go all the way with the thought experiment here and go back to 1947, go back to the partition plan, and then we, we switch positions. If you did that, I would contend that uh, the places would switch and they would act very, very similar. See, the idea that, that uh, Sam is getting at here is, look, they just have worse values. You know, they're just kind of worse people. They have worse ideas. And as a result of that, they're kind of crazy. So, you know, that kind of explains why they're in the situation they're in. And what he said at one point, quote, um... How is is how can Israel expect to deal with these people? But Sam, I think that that's the problem, and that's why so many people object to your overall take on this issue in Israel Palestine. Is that you're not willing to grant uh, the idea that if you change the histories from 1947 and on, you flip the histories completely, that they would react exactly the same. Uh, let me give one, uh, another example here, or draw an analogy, because I've spoken about this in another context before. You know, when some people on the issue of race like to say, well, you know, the problem with black people in America today is just their values. Their culture, their values, and that's the end of the conversation. Now, that should be a, a red flag. If you think that's the only issue, oh boy, that's, that's a gross, simplistic way of looking at it. The reality is... If you flip the histories, so again, do the same thought experiment, flip the histories, but flip the histories going back to the founding of the United States. So let's say Jim Crow was against uh, uh, white people. Segregation was against white people. Slavery, there was slavery of white people. We lived in a country that was, you know, uh, whatever, whatever it is, 88% white and 12% uh, or 88% black, 12% white. And again, 
the white ones were the oppressed ones all along. Don't you think that the crime statistics of uh, white people, given those facts, would be almost exactly like the crime statistics of black people like they are today? See, I think the point is there, there are logical explanations outside of just religion and values that explain it. And, I mean, the biggest factor, the elephant in the room that explains why Palestinians are angry and why they're willing to say things that go way too far, like wipe Israel off the map, is that they're occupied right now, man. I mean, that's... I would... I, I mean, put yourself in that position. If you were occupied, you have no personal autonomy, no freedom, you can't make your own decisions. You're gonna get pissed off, you're gonna say, yeah, fucking kill them all, you're gonna get angry. That doesn't mean it's right, because it's not right. But you have to try to find a solution which gets rid of the wrongs on both sides. And that's, you know, my main disagreement here is that I feel like Whenever many people discuss the issue of Israel-Palestine, it's almost like there's nothing but lecturing of the Palestinians to say, well, get your shit together, fix your values, don't be so, so such crazy religious people. When we should be saying, okay, what realistically do we do moving forward? I mean, again, just to bring up the race thing, that's akin to what Bill O'Reilly does to black people when he just lectures black people about their culture and their society. Is that intelligent? Is that going to work? Is that going to fix societal ills? Of course it's not going to do that. What would do that is if you actually have policies that make sense, that are rational, that provide everybody an equal opportunity, and that, you know, try to mitigate historical wrongs. In the case of the Isra Israeli-Palestinian situation, the answer is a two-state solution. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm not saying that if you do a two-state solution, that's it, tomorrow Hamas doesn't exist, and there will be zero anti-Semitism that exists in the Palestinian territories. Of course that's not the case, and of course many people are going to want to go further. But the idea that a two-state solution wouldn't tremendously help with all of these uh, social ills and all these feelings of ill will towards each other, I think that's, that's crazy in all seriousness. Because... Uh, to give you another example here, during the last war in Gaza, now we've already been through the statistics and, you know, about 80% civilians are killed and Israel bombed schools and hospitals and the power plant. Uh, what happened during that war and directly after that war? You know who became incredibly more powerful? Hamas. They got much more popularity now, again, I'm not saying that if it weren't for the occupation, every Palestinian would be a peacenik and there wouldn't be any fundamentalist religious people. Of course not. But you're not helping. You're not working towards the solution if, you know, a right-winger and a warmonger like Netanyahu is in power because it's empirically proven that his approach, his policies, lead to an increase in radicalization among the Palestinians. I don't want them to turn to Hamas. I don't want them to be militaristic. I want them to be less militaristic and more peaceful. And the way to do that is to sit down at the table and get a two-state deal. Now, I know a lot of people say, hey, back in the day, the, the Palestinians got some pretty good proposals and they walked away from the table. I don't know all the history of that. That may be true. I don't need, even need to get into that right now because the main point is, as we've discussed before on the show, the Palestinians proposed through Jordan recently at the UN uh, a peace deal which had the 1967 borders, it split up Jerusalem, and it said, okay, let's sit down and work this out and get every single detail out of the way, and then within a two to five year time frame, let's do our two-state solution. And Israel said, out of hand, no. Netanyahu said, no, I'm not interested. I'm not interested, and in fact, because you even brought it up, you're anti-Semitic. Well, then my question is, what are the Palestinians supposed to do? What are they supposed to do? I, what are they supposed to do if... They go the militaristic route, and we all agree that's wrong. And then, of course, Israel has more force, and they could crush that in a second, and they do. So the militaristic route is wrong. But then when they try to go the diplomatic route, they get shut down by Netanyahu. So what do you want them to do? Do you just want, okay, perpetual state of occupation, uh, occupation, shut up and take it, because you're all religious crazy people, and, you know, we just need to figure out, again, as Sam said, how can Israel... Quote, how can Israel expect to deal with these people? It just bothers me that, you know, ask yourself the question, 
how are the Palestinians supposed to deal with these people when they're occupied, when they're occupied? That, to me, appears to be the original sin. Again, I'm not saying if you get rid of the occupation, everything's hunky-dory, yay, everybody loves each other now. No. But will you move closer towards peace? And will the popularity of Hamas drop tremendously? And will militancy drop tremendously if you do a two-state deal? Yes. Once you do a two-state deal, we can work on strategies to get a long-term solution to the problem. But as of right now, with continued occupation and continued oppression of the Palestinians, as you point your finger at them and blame them, that's not going to help. In fact, it's only uh, adding to the problem. So, and understand, guys, uh, I like Sam Harris a lot, man. I've said before on the show, I love the book, The End of Faith. The book, Letter to a Christian Nation, is in my top five books all time. And Dave Rubin's been nothing but great to me. I mean, you know, this guy... I have some disagreements with him on some issues, but he's a smart guy, uh, he means well, and, you know, I have nothing but good feelings towards these guys. So don't take any of this as a personal attack. Don't say, hey, you know, you guys are assholes for saying what you're saying. They're intelligent people, and they just happen to disagree with us on this issue, but further dialogue is always merited, and we can work with and have conversations with people like this, because they're not you know, crazy people with ulterior motives, as some people like to say, and some people like to believe. So, I don't want anybody to take this the wrong way, but just know that on this particular issue, is there a disagreement between myself and specifically Sam Harris? Uh, yes, it, there is. And uh, th the solution is the most important part to me, and it doesn't seem like there's much of an effort to even have a conversation about what could be the solution. He said, it's hard to find Jews who really believe their religion. I don't, I, I disagree. <laughs> I disagree completely. Now, if he wants to make the point about statistics, that's a different point, And that may be true. Hey, statistically, there are less. Certainly as a raw number, there are less, because there are just so much fewer Jews in the world. But, I, of course I've seen them. We've covered uh, stories on the show about how in some ultra-Orthodox communities, it is, they do it all the time where they have the circumcision rit rituals where they cut off the tip of the baby dick and they suck the bloody baby dick tip off. That, yeah, that's a crime. That's uh, genital mutilation. That's it, putting your mouth on a baby's bloody dick. And there are some babies that have gotten herpes and died from that. The idea that, what, there, there are very few or no Jews who truly believe in, in the Torah? I think that's demonstrably untrue. And when he says, well, there's a bias, uh, I have a bias against suicide bombers and human shields, it, it's funny because the, since the Palestinians have no power, they end up using suicide bombers. But, you know, Israel uses laser-guided missiles, and they end up killing civilians and women and children. Why would you not have a bias against both of those things? You should be biased against, whether they, they're trying to or not, you should have a bias against attacking schools, attacking hospitals, knocking out power plants, killing 80% civilians, killing women and children. It should be a bias against both things. A bias against suicide bombers, of course, but also a bias against violence that happens to be done with a much more powerful military. Just because it looks much more official in how they do it doesn't mean that the the reasons behind it are more sound. And to the idea that, well, we think they're always doing it for defensive reasons, I would just flat out disagree with that. If you want to do something for defensive reasons, special forces very targeted against specific Hamas militants who are shooting rockets from a specific place, I'm with you. But that's not what happened, and that's not what's been happening in the region. And for uh, the human shields point, man, I mean... Well, if it's still a moral conundrum for you, if they pull a, a, a civilian and put him in, in front of themselves, you still pull the trigger? Because that's the argument Israel always uses. Like, oh yeah, okay, we killed a lot of civilians. We didn't mean to, number one. Number two, they used human shields. So what, what do you think is going to happen? Well, I wouldn't pull the trigger if there's a civilian in front of a, a bad guy. I just, I wouldn't do it. And the fact that they're, like, nonchalant about the fact that they did pull the trigger, it's like, well, of course, we had to get the bad guy, so we went through the civilians. No! No, no, that's morally depraved! That's morally depraved! So, I just... It just strikes me that there are... There's a lot of faulty logic here, and it's unfortunate to see from people I respect.